you played what what a lot of people would say is the steroid era, right? Yeah. What how how crazy was that? Um, while you were playing in the league, like did they, did they increase testing like uh, for teams you were on? Like uh, you know you were around a lot of those uh, players for sure. Like how, just first talk about yeah how 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 crazy of a time that was to be around in that steroid era. Um. Man, they tried to put regulations and stuff as I as I as I started getting in, like on my second year. But the first year, um, shoot, man, I don't know. It's just boys is big. <laughs> <laughs> that ball come in there, boom, he's hitting balls off the top of the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you got to bring your own sauce. Bring yeah. your own sauce. So yeah. I had to bring mine. But yeah. it was crazy, man. You know, the recovery on guys if they if they're using these type of things. They can recover quicker. They recover faster. They don't get as tired. Um, but at the end of the day, I don't care how big and strong they are. They still got to hit that round ball with that round bat. I was going to ask you that. They still take the skill, right? Man, Barry Bonds is the greatest. Yeah. He was great I, I, before the allegations, you know? You can't you can't do what he did. I don't care what you take. Did you, did you play against Barry Bonds at all? No, no. I, I okay. came in right after he was uh, coaching. Oh, gotcha. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. okay. Who, who was uh, like just a guy you played against or played with that, that just like kind of blew you away? I was like, this dude's just another level. Um, man, like, why do you do this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that just blew me away. Yeah. Yeah. Just was like, man. I'll, I, s- I'll say power. I'll break it down because. Like players, it's different categories. Yeah, it's different yeah category. no, yeah. It's, it's I'll say power story. rise. I don't know if you had to be a baseball guy. Yoannis Cespedes when he first came. Okay. I've heard Cuba. the name. Yeah, I played with him in Oakland. Yeah, and when he was hitting, it was it was very different than a lot, <laughs> than a lot of people. <laughs> okay. It was very different. He was hitting balls off the like the backside of the Coliseum on the grave. Oh, thing. <laughs> I wouldn't see anybody doing that. Um, Did it sound different coming off the bat? Then? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you always know a hit about it, the sound off the bat. Yeah, it, okay. it, was, it was heavy. Um, another guy that I would say, like, um, I'll say pitching-wise, one of my toughest pitchers I faced was Felix Hernandez, King King Felix. Yes, okay. I remember, Seattle. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would say that. What Mike, made him so difficult? He threw everything. <clears throat> and everything he threw was like an X. You got me. So he had the slider, which would slide. Uh, if you're a right-handed hitter, you know, slide away that from way, you. It's sliding away from you. But he also had a two-seamer that slid that came back came into back to you, you with sink, and it went down. Ooh. Then he had a curveball that was almost like a 12 to 6, meaning 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Drop vertically rather down. than a, what we'd equate with a... Right, and then he also threw 94 to 96 miles an hour. So he might just, <laughs> just ride it right by you. Right. And then he had a changeup that was like a split finger that went like a fastball but went straight down. He had five different pitches, mm. and he knew how to control them. Right. So that's what made him very difficult. Uh, an individual pitcher to have five different pitches is pretty rare, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, one guy, and again, I, I, and did you play against Mariano Rivera? I did. Well, okay, now my naive understanding is he, he sort of had a reputation of having one pitch. Yeah. Was that, that basically true? Yeah. That's that's what he pretty much threw that cutter. And like, what what made him so good at what he did? Then? It was a bald cutter. Like when he threw it, you can't see the seams. The seams is what tells you what pitch it is. If okay. a ball's rotating like this, it's a fastball. If a ball's rotating like this, it's a slider. If a ball's rotating like this, it's a curveball. Okay. If a ball's rotating like this, it's gonna run back into you. So you gotta see the spin on the ball. Mm, and some guys have the ability to get around the ball and create that spin so fast that it's bald. So you don't know what it's about to do. And his ball was going like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> like this. So is that like, a function of having like an exceptionally large hand? Probably or? how he got the, to, now, to now we know from... through the scientific analytic part that it's the, uh, the rotation of spins he's able to create. Okay. Because of his fingers, right? Okay. So he's able to stay on that ball long enough to create enough spin revolutions to where you can't see the, See, the, get a, a read on a traditional read. Right, right okay. Right. Did he have like huge hands or something, or long fingers or something? Long or something? fingers, and he knew how to put apply the pressure the proper way. To okay. Be able to create so what? It wasn't so much like the length of the fingers, but the the the, the gift for applying the pressure. I think need. all of it plays. Oh, a part. Okay. I think yeah. the okay. length, like I think the length plays a part, but I also think the ability to put the pressure on the ball the proper way. Okay. Um, is what got it. 
And um, yeah, he just threw that cutter. <laughs> okay. That was it. But he knew I threw it short. He knew I threw it throw it big. So it wasn't always the same cutter. Okay. You know? What do you mean by throwing it short and throwing it big? Meaning like the cutter didn't cut that much on some. He could control that. Okay. Or the cutter might cut more. Okay, so you have a small a small curve for church of the ball or a larger one. And he, right, because he if he throws control. it like this, that's a strike. But if he throws the same pitch and it goes like that, you swing at that, that's a ball. And it's outside, okay. So you got to now know which pitch you're going to swing at because you got to hit a ball that's a strike. But right. if it looks like a strike, it becomes a ball. Yeah. That's why he throws it two different ways. Gotcha, okay. It's all about upsetting the timing of the hitter. Okay. So he's going to throw one short. He's going to throw one a little bit slower. He's going to throw one fast and move a lot more. He's going to upset your timing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Now you see a lot of these other sports, they are increasing um, the scoring somehow. You got hockey that they, they they found it. They are finding ways to where it could be more goals to 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 get pretty much like fans, um, you know, get more fans right to get the uh, casual fans. Same thing with basketball. Same thing with football. Now with baseball. They're trying to, and they have been, you know, the last, what, five, ten years, trying to get more home runs in the game. Mm-hmm. Is Do you think that's good or bad for the game to, to, to you know, to, they're trying to increase the casual fans, trying to increase the younger uh, fan base, things like that. That's, that's, that's the reason for it. But is it good for the game? Yeah, I think they went through their phase of doing that already. Yeah. I think that um, – you know, what Aaron Judge just did, hitting, you know, over 61 home runs. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that they have completed the process of teaching guys that, you know, we want to hit more home runs for the fan recognition. I think now you're going to see the game start turning back towards mm. playing the ball game, being able to go gap to gap, still leave the ballpark, but being able to go gap to gap. And now that guy that's that um, that utility man or that um, – that smaller guy that that plays the game on a high level every day, I think he's gonna start being the focal point again, slowly but surely. And have more value. Okay. Yeah, because mm-hmm. because the averages are way down because the power is way up. Right. So guys aren't hitting no more; they're just they're hit or miss. Right. You know, and so that's also taking a toll on the game, because the action level isn't as high as they would like it to be. Mm-hmm. So now they're gonna even it out, I think, and and it's gonna be a fun game within the next year or two. Okay. Yeah. Because the only thing fun about that watching is is if somebody's on a no hitter type of run, you know. Mm-hmm. Without that, it's just a lot of misses. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> with a, with an occasional hit. Yeah. But if somebody's if somebody's in the midst of pitching a no hitter, that that could be entertaining. That's for entertaining. Sure. Oh, for sure. For sure. You just gotta, you know, if you're not in tune with the game, then like the things that are beautiful about it, you won't catch it. Right. You won't That's understand the saying. beauty of fielding a ground ball. Yeah. You won't understand how many times these guys field it correctly. And if you went out there and tried it, you'd be like, how do they do this every <laughs> single, single time. day? No days off. How do they? How do you catch that ball every time? Mm. Guys go whole season, 162 games, with like five errors, six yeah. mistakes. Like we, when you understand the professionalism that's pulled out of the individual. That, that, that reminds me of a great quote I just saw again recently. Uh, the amateur does something until they get it right. The professional does it till they can't get it wrong. Mm-hmm. Mm. I love that statement. Yeah. I just, I, it's, but it's, that's the thing. It's like you – and a lot – I mean, um, in reading and following a lot of stuff with, with high-level people, like the, one of the things is that, that a lot of them will say, like there's no secret sauce to this. Like a lot of the stuff they practice a lot is really rudimentary, simple stuff. But they have the attention span to do that over and over and over again. So literally, they're not messing up what would be, you know, what what can be at the professional level, a simple play. Mm-hmm. And then you know, and then you, then you have, a, you know, you still have a chance to make some amazing plays. But the consistency of whatever fielding the ground ball or trapping a soccer ball or catching a football, like you just don't mess that up mm-hmm. like at that yeah. level, you know. Yeah, it's like that football guy on the deep pass, and it goes through his hands. It's like, yeah, bro, you want to go to the NFL? <laughs> yeah. I always Catch say, the man. Ball, I always yeah. say, man. You want to buy your mama a house or not, man? Yeah. <laughs> like, what you want to do? Well, like, you got to catch that ball. That's it. Figure that part out. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So. No, that's cool. That's cool. All right. Once again, you guys are on the bench, on the bench podcast with Bubba Pink, home of sports, music, and mayhem.